Have you ever wondered how to take this and turn it into this, a wooden spoon? That's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. To make this spoon, I am going to use four simple tools. I'm going to use simple tools that I often have with me when I'm on trips and expeditions. And yes, you can use less and you can use more, but this is my simple selection. So we have a folding saw, we have a hook, or sometimes referred to as spoon knife, we have my sheath knife and my Husqvarna forest axe. Um, maybe a smaller axe would be easier, but this is one of my favourite axes, um, so I'll be using this. Job number one is to decide what size spoon it is you want to make. Are you making something like this that's for eating with or do you want to make something bigger that's for stirring a big pot or or something else if you want to make something like this that's for eating with um, and of course you could stir with it as well if you wanted to um, but maybe a whole spoon of coffee powder might be a bit strong then the sort of width you're looking for for a piece of wood is the width of your thumb so next we're going to choose our piece of wood. I've got a piece here, it's a piece of off a, a bay tree that I have in my garden. Um, although in preference my favourite is to use silver birch. You want to get a straightish piece of wood with no obvious knots or branches having left. Um, and it needs to be about 1.5 times the length of the actual spoon that you want to produce. So if you want to have a spoon that's, that's this big, then we'll obviously need to go and make it a bit longer. Um, that will become apparent for in a minute. So let's cut this piece of wood, shall we? I'm going to go from there. And I'm going to have quite a long spoon, I think, this time. So I'm going to go to here. So now we have our piece of wood for our spoon. We've got a round that's probably and definitely twice as big as it needs to be. What that means is that we can split the piece of wood down the middle using our axe in a second and make two spoons. The reason for doing that is there tends to be a pith in the middle of wood, the original ring often, which tends to be porous, tends to let water through and liquid through, and tends to be very, very soft. We want to avoid having that in our spoon. So next up, time to split. To get your axe dead center, and to give you more control, use a mallet that I taught you how to make in a previous video. There we have it. So now we've got our piece of wood to carve from, what we're going to do is take a pencil and we're going to draw on here the shape that we want our spoon to be. So hopefully you can see that. There is my spoon design. There's the end of the handle all the way through to here. You can see where the head of the spoon's going to be in the shaft. The spoon's going to sit, so the bit we're going to scallop out or take wood away from for the, for the bowl of the spoon is going to be just here. And um, the next stage, really, is to start um, taking out your, your bowl in the middle here, because that will tell us how much of the ha handle or how the handle's going to be. And then once we've taken out the bowl in the middle, um, we're then going to start roughly using our saw and our axe to quickly shed and get, get rid of as much as the excess wood as possible. Let's go. So somebody once asked me how best to use one of these hook knives. And in my experience, um, the idea of being a beaver with it is the best way. So what I mean by that is we're going to take lots of small chunks away 
slowly but surely and not look to force the knife too much through the wood. What I like to do is take wood away from one side and then switch and take wood away from the other side. Another top tip is to go across the grain as opposed to with the grain because you find that you have more control that way. So many people want to make their spoon faster. They want to achieve more quicker. For me, making a spoon with a few um, hand tools like I am is almost therapy. It's a time to engage in something with sole focus. It's a time to enhance and improve my skill set. Maybe it's a chance to make a gift for somebody or, or make a, a thing that I can use to stir with, eat with or whatever. But there's something very therapeutic about just sat here, just gently whittling away. There's something very satisfying about the end result of regardless of how long it's taken you to make it, that you actually have something that's starting to take some shape and come together just as you're sat there now achieving it. I suppose a word to the wise, this video is probably going to be maybe 8 to 12 minutes in length. It can sometimes take hours and hours and hours to make a spoon, so don't rush it, enjoy the process. We're not making these for money. If we were, we'd have a massive factory pumping out thousands of them. We're making this for a form of art, a form of practicality, and it's your spoon. So it can be any shape or any size that you like. There's no rules. Um, just follow these steps. So I'm going to carry on whittling this hole out. There's a big temptation when you make this, your spoon to, um, to work on the handle first. It's the really obvious thing. But what I find is if I work on the handle first um, and then go on to the bowl, what I find is that often we end up snapping the spoon just here because of the amount of pressure we have to put into the bowl. So I always like to get the bowl built first and then the handle of the spoon built second. So a little while's passed and I've now got the, the bowl of the spoon carved out and it's a little bit deeper than it will need to be because we'll lose some extra wood off the top as we go through. We can always play more with the hook knife later. Next step is to go and get the axe and to get the saw and to go and rough out the spoon. That means we're going to cut around the top of the bowl here, probably with straight cuts using the, the saw first. Um, and um, that's, the, that's the very next step. I'm probably also with the saw going to cut here and to here just to get the rough outline of the handle in place. Um, so let's get busy, shall we? So there we have it, all the cuts in place. Next thing to do is we're going to use the axe to thin down the back. We use our mallet as well, let's get going. And so you'll see now, already, the axe is starting to take some shape, it's getting thinner. Sorry, the spoon is starting to take some shape, it's getting thinner, the bowl's in place, the handle's ready to carve, and the next step now is for us to start carving. Oh, let me get this right for you. It's to start carving out the back of the spoon using our sheath knife and also the sides and the front, keeping still the handle in place. So next up, we're going to use an axe take away as much wood or excess wood as possible away from the head of the spoon where the bowl is, the back of the spoon and maybe a bit of the handle. 
I'm using our axe with a shorter grip than normal, just so we have more control. And obviously remember it's keeping our other fingers away. What we're trying to do is save as much time, effort and energy as possible um, in the carving process with the knife because that takes a lot longer than using the axe for this bit. So there we go, now we've taken away a lot of the excess wood. Starting to take the shape of a spoon. Now time, let's get the knife out and let's start whittling this away. If you need to and you feel confident enough, we can shortcut a lot of the thinning out here going back to our axe and our block. However, it requires a lot of dexterity to do that. So just be careful if that's what your chosen method is going to be. Obviously it helps to have a super sharp axe. Usable already. One of the things to do is to hold this up to the sunlight and look through to see what daylight you can come through and that'll tell you what patches of thickness and thinness. Next step, shape out the bowl, top of the bowl with a knife, get that ready to use and then start working on the handle. So about 25 minutes later we have a spoon ready to use, shallow enough to eat with ready to go. Of course we can make it prettier into one of these. But that takes quite a lot more time. A great hack for you if you're doing this at home like I am and you don't have loads of time is to go and take your spoon that you're carving, this one not finished yet, go and pop it in a plastic bag and pop it in your freezer in between sessions of carving it. Um, freezes it, it means the wood stays nice and green and easy to carve. You just get a bit of chilly fingers next time you make a spoon. So there we have it, a few steps on how to make a wood a spoon using a few simple tools as though you're in the bush. A saw, an axe, a knife and a, a hook knife, a spoon knife. Hope that's been of use to you and if it has been of use to you please go and hit subscribe, share this channel and why not leave us a comment or find us on Facebook and send me a picture of your spoon. My name's Robbie Yates and you are incredible.